Hi, I'm Preston Williams, and welcome to another edition of Jazz Talk. Today on our show, we have one of the most accomplished musicians around today. He's been on the scene for over 50 years and has worked with many greats from Elvis Presley to Diana Ross, Weather Report, Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, Joni Mitchell, Michael Jackson, Paul McCartney. I can go on and on. He's worked with everybody. He is a drummer, percussionist, and educator. Please welcome to Jazz Talk, Mr. Alex Acuna. How are you, sir? I'm doing really good. Thank you, Preston, Man, it, for inviting it's so, me. It's so good to have you on. Uh, like I said, you're one of my heroes, and I've been listening to you for decades. You know, and Alex, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about or actually start out with, um, you've been on the scene, as I said, for a long time, and I'm curious to know more about your background and your humble beginnings, how you got started in music. I understand that you are from Peru. Yes, I am. Uh, I was born in, uh, in the north of Lima, uh, in the state of Lima. Okay. Um, my father was uh, an incredible musician, teacher, and uh, I'm the number six of the six boys. We mm. were we were eleven kids, and uh, I'm the number ten of all, all of all of them. My little sister is the youngest one, and anyhow, music was twenty four seven in my home, mm. and uh, my father taught my five oldest brothers how to play many kind of instruments, not just, uh, you know, they, they play guitar, piano, bass, drums, percussion, you know, the, the, he taught him uh, classical music and a lot of sight reading, everything, very well prepared. My father was a disciplinarian kind of teacher. Mm. So he, he wanted to have, you know, the, how do you call it, the lessons right on time on, on, on Thursday or Friday, you know, he, be, he give you a lesson on Sunday afternoon and then you have four or five days to, to practice. Mm. And, uh, but since I was the youngest one, my mother told him not to teach me any music. My mother wanted me to be like a carpenter or a mechanic or something like that. Uh. <laughs> In her own words, to have a profession. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So my father obediently never told any, anything uh, uh, to me, but I was around the lessons, I was, you know, three, four, five, six, seven years, eight, mm -hmm. nine, you know, sitting around, checking how he taught. So that's how I learned. Mm. So my respect about my mother, not for me to be a musician, I never play in front of my mother. Really? No, never, not until, until, until 10. And then, but I was playing already because every time they left the house, I play. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then at the rehearsals, when they have the rehearsals, I was sitting under the table and uh, listening to all the rehearsals and all the, you know, everything, directions from my father, from my brothers and, you know, rehearsing big bands and all kinds of music. Also in my country in those days, we play everything. We play classical music, we play mm -hmm. Latin music, you know, Brazilian, Cuban. We play all the South American music. We play jazz, you know, all the uh, Duke Ellington stuff. And, mm -hmm. Count Basie stuff and also the big band, you know, Perez Prado and everything, everything. We play everything. And uh, they had a big band uh, working always on the weekends, like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they made good money. They made good living, you know, the, my five brothers and my dad. So there was six salaries right there, six, six bills. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. So, so Alex, in the, uh, the mid-60s, you made a move. You moved to uh, Puerto Rico. Well, no, not actually. So I start, one day I start playing uh, because they needed a drummer. So the first time they auditioned, I auditioned for anybody in my entire life was to my family. Ah, so okay. They never saw me play. So my brother, the drummer, played trumpet also. He ran out with his girlfriend. <laughs> and they didn't have a drummer. So I said, I play the drums. And, and they said, what, you never play? I said, well, you never saw me play. <laughs> but I play, so they, they say, okay, let's play these tunes, sure, you know, several, 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 in the drums, drums, timbales, bass drum, everything, cowbell, and they say, whoa, how do you know, <laughs> I've been listening to you guys, I know these tunes better than you guys, so I, I start working at 10 years old, and my mother came, and she said, okay, he's going to play in the band, but you have to pay him exactly the same amount that you guys are making. Every okay. Same amount you guys are making, he's going to make. 
Otherwise, he won't go. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> he was my, she became my manager. <laughs> Anyhow, so then I moved to Lima when I was 16 years old oh. from that little town. My brothers went to Lima before me, and they became the best musicians in Lima, doing recordings, uh, sessions, and uh, playing in big bands and playing in orchestras. In those days, they had a uh, big band playing on the radio stations. I'm talking 60s, you know, mm -hmm. 50s to 60s. And uh, so they called me and said, Alex, uh, you should come over to this city because uh, then not too many musicians like you. I said, okay, you know, find me an apartment. I will take my mom and my sister, my little sister, and I'll go. So I went, I was 16. And as soon as I came in three months, I became one of the top players in the, in Lima when I was ah. 16. I started recording when I was 16 years old. Amazing. And then, and I was playing in two tel television shows, programs, one at uh, 1 p.m. and the other one in another television program. Another channel was uh, 9 p.m. So Perez Prado, the king of the mambo, he came looking for a drummer because there, in those days, there, there were a, a lot of uh, great Cuban musicians already living in Lima, married with the Peruvian ladies and stuff. They have a family. And so he knew, and they told him, and they, they told him that um, I was there. So he came to check me out. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he saw me play, immediately he sent the manager. He said, you know, I want to bring that guy, the little boy, because I, I was only uh, 17 to 18. And uh, I want to bring him to the United States. So he offered me, this is 1963 and 1964, I came to the United States State, to Los Angeles, and I came with a permanent residency. Oh. I, I never had all the, any visa, working visa or student visa, nothing. I came with a permanent, permanent residency, a, the green card uh -huh. in 1964, April 3rd. So this year, it's been 56 years for me out of my home and living here. And then in 1965, I went, after I finished with Perez Prado, I went to live in San Juan, Puerto Rico because mainly because I wanted to study Latin music and classical music. Yeah, yeah. So you did, you uh, you also attended for a few years the uh, Puerto Rico Conservatory of right. Arts or Music. Yeah, yeah. So you studied there for three years. What was that like? Well, I was there for seven years. Seven, okay. But yeah. Yeah, I got married there and everything. Uh, my oldest uh, three kids are uh, Boricuas, Puerto, Puerto Rican. Actually, they they went to uh, Park State University. My kids, they live in uh, Maryland. Mer That's where I live. I live in Maryland. I know. That's what I'm telling you because I know you, you're in Maryland. So my oldest daughter lives in Maryland. She is living there. And, uh, and uh, uh, oh, my goodness. Anyhow, that, that little old city. I, I'll tell you right now. Okay. But she's very, very close to the BWI. She works for American Airlines. I'm very close to BWI. I'm about 20 minutes from there, 15, 20 minutes. So I know exactly where it is. Yeah. Ellicott City. Ellicott City. Five minutes from me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. I'm in Colombia, so I know exactly where that is. That's incredible. Right. Wow. So I go there all the time, you know, and uh, anyhow. So I, I spent those times in Puerto Rico almost eight years. And then I noticed that I needed to come to the United States again, my second trip, to really uh, develop what I came to the United States. I came to play music. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I always love jazz. I always listen to all kinds of music since I was a little kid. Yeah. I listen to everything. I'm still listening to everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyhow, that was in my heart. So I started playing at 10, became a recording musician at 16. And they came to the United States when I was 18. Mm, that's incredible. So uh, you're in Puerto Rico for a while, and eventually, uh, what you moved to the to uh, I believe uh, Las Vegas in 1974 or something like that. Uh, 1974, yes, because uh, I came playing. I always, you know, it's been very, it's been my life has been very blessed for me because uh, I always came playing with a group or a band, mm -hmm. never looking. For a gig, never, no, always. A, wow. I know, I know. It's That's a, amazing. It's, You've uh, had an, an, an unreal, when I looked at your background and I saw who you played with, it's unbelievable. I mean, it reads, it's almost like I'm looking at a dictionary and I'm like, 
Alex has played with all these people. I mean, incredible. You've had such an illustrious career. I'm so yeah. impressed. I wanted yeah. to ask you, Alex, how did, sure. you hook, how did you hook up with Elvis Presley? I was surprised when I saw that. That's exactly. So when you say that I came to Las Vegas, yes, I came to New York first, uh -huh. and then I came to Los Angeles. But let me tell you this. When I was in New York, I noticed that the city was too big for me, but not too big in size. It was too uh -huh. big in music. Okay. I, I was not prepared to play what I want to play in New York because they will they would they would have put me in the box and playing Latin music only. And that's not what I am. Right. And then I came to Los Angeles, exactly the same thing. I said, no. So I'm not ready. I'm very honest with myself. I said, I'm not ready. I'm you know, anyhow, I'm underqualified. So I'm going to Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, I train myself in big band, reading, playing shows, concerts, and everything. So I got hired to play at the International Hilton Hotel, and Elvis used to come there all the time. <sighs> so he has his own drummer, but the, the first time Elvis used, used a percussionist was me. He never had a percussionist before. So the conductor told him, I said, you know, we have a, a Alex here is a percussionist from Peru, and so yeah okay you know anyhow that's how i play every time every time he came to wow. to do his shows every four months he came three times a year and uh he came for about two weeks non-stop and uh, it was great fantastic fantastic guy anyhow. oh man yeah yeah i think he was a martial artist too if i'm not uh mistaken and you also played with diana ross as well how'd you uh hook up with her yeah well uh in, in the Hilton, you know, Diana, The Temptations, I Can Tina Turner, all those mm -hmm. people, uh, Gladys Knight and The Peep, they all went there. And sometimes I play drums, sometimes I play percussion with them, you know, with those bands, you know. Mm. When, they, when they have their own drummer, I play percussion. And uh, so I play with The Temptations and everybody, you know. And, uh, and Diana said, you're a good drummer. Can you, I would like you to play with me. I said, of course. So... Actually, I started playing with Diana while I was playing with Weather Report. I'm about to ask you about that. How in the world did you meet Jill Zawinu and Wayne Shorter? I'm, I'm so interested in knowing about uh, Weather Report and, of course, your time with them. How did you uh, hook up with them? Exactly. This is, this is, the, this is how. Uh, when, I, when I mentioned The Temptation, uh, Olivia Newton-John was opening for The Temptations. This is when she just came from Australia. Ah, playing her little tunes, you know, ta 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 ta, 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 right. ta you know, like that. So I played the drums with her, and then the the Temptations closed the the evening, and they had an amazing drummer. Uh, I used to remember his name, anyhow. I'm, I'm at Norman Roberts, amazing jazz drummer, by by the way, and uh, so I became very good friend with him. I switched to play congas with the Temptations. Papi was a roller stone. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then in in Las Vegas, uh, Lou Lou Rolls came, Lou Rolls, yeah. and he had a, a drummer percussionist playing with him. His name is was or oh, well, he died. His name is Don Elias. Oh yeah, the great Don Elias. Yeah. Exactly. So Don Elias came to see the Temptations. The night, you know, that I'm opening on drums for Olivia Newton John, and then I switched to Congas for the Temptations, and he's in the audience. It's his night off, so he came. He said, "Wait a second, there, there are only two guys that play drum and percussion at the same level, and one is Walfredo de los Reyes Senior." And the other one is Alex Acuna, Alex Necio Sup Acuna. Yeah. It has to be Alex. So he wait for me. So when, when I came out from the musician's uh, exit, I said, Alex. And I knew him. I said, darn. Oh, <laughs> you know, he picked me up just like Elvin, you know, Elvin Jones. Yeah. Ah, 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 wow. You know, because he was, he, he, he was like six fours, you know, down, yeah. tall guy. And uh, so we became friends, and he said, Alex, I'm forming a band with Miroslav Vitos, the, the, the bass player that used to play with World Report. I said, I know who he is. 
He said, well, I want you to be with me so we can switch drums and percussion. I said, great. So I quit the, <laughs> the <Dino Ross. laughs> I quit the Hilton. No, I quit the Hilton. Oh, okay. I was playing still at the Hilton. And uh, I kept in touch with Diana later on when I joined with the report. Anyhow, he was the one that recommended me him and David Liebman, because I got to play with David Liebman. Uh, yeah, sax player, Elias. Dave Liebman, yeah. Yeah, Dave Liebman, Don Elias, uh, Richie Berak, mm -hmm. piano player, and uh, I forgot the bass, the bass player, anyhow. And um, we will play about two months, you know, here in California, Denver, the, you know, the, the Arizona, and the, we never went to the East Coast. So, and then, they left to New York. I said, no, man, I can't go to New York. I, my family is in Las Vegas, you know. I already have my, my wife and three children. So I said, no, no, I'm staying. So they called, I, I think David Lindman and, and Don Elias called Sawinol. <sighs> Sawinol, we just play with a blah, 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 blah. Peruvian, whatever you want to see him, you better get him. So <laughs> Sawinol called me and they were looking for a percussionist because Chester Thompson was playing drums. Right. And I said, yeah, man, let's do it. You know, because Weather Report, when I was in, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, the first record is called Weather Report. Right. I said, that changed my life, the whole album. Alphonse Mouzon is on the oh, great drummer, yeah. On drums and uh, Miros Habitos, you know, and I said, man, that music, because talking about music, for me, you know, remember I told you I come from a family of musicians and my father, right. my father was a, an incredible musician that knew very good music. He played many instruments and he used, usually used to talk to my brothers he said, music has three main essence. One is rhythm, the other one is melody and harmony. Yeah. And then he said, also improvisation, that that becomes composition. A spontaneous improvisation, you have to learn how to improvise. That's like instantly a composition. Mm. And, and, and my father, so I remember when I heard Weather Report, I said, that's what my father told me. It's yeah. melody there, it's harmony there, and it's rhythm there, right there. Yeah. Right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. It's not just two chords progressions, you know, there's a lot of changes in the music. Right. Right. <laughs> and the beautiful melody, and just that you remember the melody. Oh, yeah, Birdland, you know, yeah. Everything. <laughs> So everything was melodic, but also play with the open and, and as, oh. So I knew what the report, when Joe Sawinor called me, I said, Joe, you know, I am, I'm there, man. Wow. I'm, I'm in. So with the report, you know, we went on the road. Actually, there is a video we did in 1975 at the Philharmonic in Berlin. I have that show. Yeah. yeah. We played there. That's my first gig yeah. that I played with Weather Report Wayne. Slim Johnson and uh, Chester Thompson and Joe. Yeah, yeah. You, I think after they had finished tail spinning, you came on when they did Black Market, right? Yeah, before Black Market, I yeah. started with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you know that. Wow, that's, that's my group. Man. I know these guys. Yeah. So anyhow, <laughs> that's how I joined with the report. And as you know, with this, um, I went with the report here and there, you know, so maybe four, five, six months out of the year. And then Diana did uh, other dates. And uh, so I covered those dates with Diana, you know, so I was kind of doing two gigs going on the wow. road. That's you incredible. Know, yeah, putting my, my name on, on the, on, you know, on the place, you know, so because I had a family, so I needed to to generate some, uh, also some income for my kids, you know, and uh, send them to school, blah, blah, blah. And, That's know. great. Alex, you know, one of the things that I noticed, uh, one of the things rather that changed once you were with Weather Report, their sound changed. It was because it became very like a hard groove, very percussive sound. And I think you brought that, especially on that, uh, you know, that uh, black market recording and uh, 
you know, Jocko's Barbary Coast. And uh, let me ask you this. What was your perception of Jocko uh, when you met him? Because, you know, he's looked at today as one of the greatest bass players. He revolutionized the instrument. But what was your perception of Jocko when you first met him? You know, <laughs> you know see, I always have to say something before I, I answer the question. Because remember, I was raised with five guys, my five older brothers. Right. And, and my daddy, six guys. Right. So I knew, uh, you know I, know, I know it sounds weird to say, I knew people, I knew men, I knew behaviors, I knew, you know, so I was able, I'm still able to see, it's like ev every one of us has a twin out there, you know what I mean? There are people that they look like you, or they say things like you, or they move like you, or they act like you, or mm -hmm. like that. I said, man, you remind me to this, you remind me to that. Those are the, I always kind of a very observant, and uh, when, so when I, when I met Jaco, also through, through listening the cassettes of the first album he did with Don Elias. You yeah, know. Don was on there. Yeah, uh, Don Lee. They opened with Don Lee. Exactly. Yeah. So Don, yeah. Don came to Las Vegas with Lou Rose and players. I said, man, when, when, they, when I heard the portrait of Tracy. Oh, yeah, oh, harmonics, yeah. yeah. And then when he did it, I said, is that a bass player? No, man, that's right. something like the road, Fender Rhodes. He said, right. oh, Alice, that's a bass player, that's Jack. I said, oh, my goodness. So anyhow, <laughs> to make the long story short, before we did, after we went on tour and uh, uh, Alfonso Johnson wanted to leave the band because he got a, a deal to record a solo album. And... Mm -hmm. uh, so they were uh, auditioning bass players. I recommend Jaco actually. Oh. I, said, I know, I heard these tapes and they didn't know. Joe Saulo didn't know Jaco. Uh, Wade didn't know Jaco until later, until when Jaco came over. And uh, so Joe said, call him up. Yeah, he's in New York. I called Don Elias. And said, no, uh, Jaco lives in, in Fort Lauderdale, in Florida. Okay, so I called Jaco. He said, okay, I'll go. So, you know, they sent him a ticket and, uh, and everything. And he came over. They were auditioning this song that is on Black Market. Cannonball. For Cannonball. Yeah. Now, not too many people know the story of this. I'm the only one who knows because I was there. Uh. Right? Okay. Not all the people don't. And, and I never release this, this. Anyhow, if they don't ask me, I don't release it. Anyhow. So... Jack would come, hey, Alex, you know, blah, blah, blah. So he saw a bass player in the studio playing, Devonshire Studios here in Los Angeles. We did all the recordings over there. And, uh, and Jack would say, I'm not being auditioned, right? No, 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 you're not being auditioned. We call you to play some tunes. Okay, great. So he brought two LPs. One for Joe. He flipped it to Joe because Joe was in the other side of the console. Right. Joe. Being like that, <laughs> like, a frisbee. Frisbee. <laughs> like a frisbee, and Joe got it, hey, I got it, and, and he went to wait, he gave it to him, and they start reading, oh, Joe said, Herbie is in it, in the record, okay, I give it a listen, <laughs> <laughs> Joe was very honest, you know, very honest, oh, that's funny, that's so, funny, you know, but it's true, that the way Joe, Oh, that's when Wayne said, yeah, Herbie told me about you, you know, and that's when, yeah, so anyhow. And then uh, Jacko said, well, you know, when he finished, uh, call me up. Let's go outside, Alex. You know, he took his shirt off. It was a sunny day, you know, and uh, it's just dating. You know, he, he loved the sand, and we're talking, and this and that, and, and blah, 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 blah. And then, Jacko, time for you. Okay. He came, he never heard this song for Cannonball. He had a big glasses, took his big glasses, and he said, Alex, give me an A. So I ran to the piano, give him an A, and he started tuning, perfect tuning. You know, in those days, they don't use, uh, you know, the, the gadget to right. tune up the bass or anything like that. And uh, so he opened about four or five pages, you know, of the tune. That take that you hear on that album is first take. Oh, it's beautiful. 
everything so he played, everything he played, all the different musical nuances that he played, the tom -tom yeah. all that side read it. Jaco was an incredible side reader. Wow, incredible. He, he played the tune like he already knew it, knew it like for 50 years, 50 times already, you know. Yeah. Like, amazing. So that's the first take. See, nobody knew about this. Wow. Wow. I, nobody knows about it. That's amazing. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, the sound that yeah, he got on the instrument. Now, uh, I know in, in uh, 76, you guys uh, performed, which is documented uh, on DVD, uh, live at Montreux. And it's you, uh, Manalo. Manalo is with you, uh, Jocko, Wayne, and uh, Joe. And it's an incredible concert. As a matter of fact, I was just watching it uh, again yesterday because I knew I was going to be sitting talking to you. You you were incredible on there. I'm like, wow, you know, you were amazing, especially when you guys were doing uh, Elegant People. I was just like rocking to that song. I love Elegant People. That's one of my favorite uh, yeah. songs. And uh, of course, uh, after that, you guys did. Uh, Without question, Weather Report's most successful recording, Heavy Weather, which is a, a landmark. Everything changed with that recording. What was it like working on Heavy Weather, uh, Alex? Yeah, uh, before I go there, uh, do you ask me, how was Jaco as a person? So, yeah. Jaco, in those days, Weather Report didn't have the money to get two different rooms. So, yeah. Jaco and I were uh, roommates. Ah, okay. I came from Las Vegas. I flew from Las Vegas and he flew from Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, and we roommate in the same room, two beds, you know. And uh, so I hang out with Jaco all the times that we're rehearsing, all the times that we are uh, recording. Jaco was my, 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 my cat, the, you know, we, we hanging, talking about music and, and, and anyhow. So you, your question was that, uh, how was to do uh, heavy weather, right? Yeah. So before we get there, we would, we, this is before heavy weather, we're going to Europe again. And, and so in the room, one night, Jaco said, Alex, Don Elias told me that you play drums. I said, yes, I'm a drummer. But why don't you play drums with us? I said, well, you know, I respect Chester. I, I don't want to even sit on his drums. I don't, you know, it's not, I'm, I'm hired as a percussionist. No, 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 no. So he, he took his bass, you know, it's about 11 p.m. now. You know, he put his bass by the neck, by the door, you know, a wooden door, just like that to, to get some kind of a acoustic sound. And uh, he said, you have brushes? Yeah. Play on the table, yeah. Pinocchio. Yeah, Miles, yeah. And, so he started playing all the different tunes, all the tunes, you know, the, he said, you know jazz. I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> I know. Wayne is one of my favorite composers. All oh, the, yeah. Oh, all, yeah. All the writing he did for Miles, you know. Right. I, I listened for hours. And, uh, okay, tomorrow let's go early. And you and I just sit on, on just the drums. And uh, you and I will play a little bit before, you know, we start the rehearsal. Let's go by 10 because the rehearsal started by, by noon. And uh, so we went. And that day, Joe comes early at 10 and he saw us playing. And because Chester has the drum very high, you know, his drums, Chester is taller than me. So that uh, Joe wasn't able to see who was playing the drums. He only did Jaco play. And so Joe said, who's playing the drums? You know? And he comes, Alex, I didn't know you played drums. <laughs> Why you didn't play the drums with us before? I said, no, no, that's Chester Geek. I cannot, I cannot sit on his drums. You know, that's, right. I, I, I'm very respectful about that. I said, no, 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 I don't do that. No, 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 bring your drums and percussion. We know we have two drummers and you play, you know, whatever you want to do. And Jaco said, no, I'd rather for Alex to play the drums. Oh, wow. That's the style I want to play. Right. So if you see, you told me that you saw Montreux 76, I was playing the style of Chester. Of uh. Chester. 
uh, Billy Coleman, Chester kind of beat because the music required that kind of a transition first. Right. I could not just jump on my own thing, you know, and uh, because uh, it, it won, the, the music was created differently. So I, I'm very respectful about the music, you know, and uh, no ego here. I respect the music, so the music. Right. You know, and it's okay, you know. And then, uh, uh, so Jaco said, "No, I, I want, I want you to play the drums." Okay. So we went on the road, but Chester left the band and he went with um, Phil Collins. Phil Collins, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he got a better gig than, than us. Funny <laughs> <laughs> wise, you know what I mean? Yeah, Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> so Genesis, right? And then we're playing and uh, great stuff, you know, playing all the time. It was beautiful to play with Manolo and, you know, we auditioned Manolo. Manolo came to the band. Yeah, and then, Manolo's uh, great. Fantastic. And uh, so now, we're going to make heavy weather. Uh, but you can see, man, that in heavy weather, rest in heavy weather, there, is many, there are many different genres of music. Yes. You know the juggler? Oh, the juggler's a great tune. That and Havona are two of my favorites. Yeah, the juggler is like also like a classical kind of tune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and we just did that, uh, you know, as a, a lot of those, those two songs that you just mentioned, uh, it's just a quartet, you know, it's Jaco, Wayne, uh, Joe, and me, you know. Yeah, it's no Manolo there. And anyhow, and uh, they, you know, we have a funk tune, we have ballads, we have a jazz, open jazz, blah, 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 you know, and Latin, Latin jazz, and everything. Amazing, uh, like I told you when I heard Weather Report in 1970, I said, that's the band. That's the band I wanted to play with, you know? Yeah. That was my dream band, you know? And it still is. It, it, I still listen to, to, to everything that we have done. Oh, I yeah. Think, mainly because a lot of those were improvisations, instant, instant, instantly, you know? So I said, oh man, how do I play? You know, there is in, in that uh, Montreux, I think towards the end, is honoris causa and direction. Yes. You know, no, 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 that's a different, that's Pinocchio. This is a, anyhow. That's the beginning of, um, of Berlin, the intro that he played the song we don't play in, in that uh, is honoris causa and uh, direction. And, and I think they, put, they begin the uh, Jaco's video with direction when we were playing uh, Montrose, you know, I'm playing jazz. I'm playing a, he's playing a bass solo. Uh, yeah. uh, check it out, that's at the end of the video. Yeah, yeah, I was watching uh, most of that. Like I said, I was listening to Barbary Coast and elegant people and you guys were just jamming you know one of the tunes that i also like on there alex on heavy weather is teen town well you guys were killing it on that song it's that's an incredible Woo! song teen town was great man oh, well, we, did it, well, we did it live oh uh, yeah yeah you guys performed it also on the midnight special oh yes sir oh my uh, god yeah, that was that, great that was the band right there yes that that was weather report right there. That's yep. heavy weather weather report right there. I was just watching that yesterday. You guys were awesome. Uh, and uh, yeah, Birdland and and uh, Teen Town, and you guys did did something else also to Rumba. I'm trying to remember that yeah, the tune that you guys did, but that was a great performance. Um, I think it was a April 1977, if I'm not mistaken. April of 77. I, I have a lot of rare footage on you guys, so I'm a big weather report historian. So, yeah. ah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> check, check it out. What, what you get uh, later with that? Yeah, man. I, yeah, that, that's it. It's honoris uh, causa and direction. Wow. Uh, 
That was great. Yeah, Alex, like I said, heavy weather is just a masterpiece. And I had, uh, I actually had Chester. Chester was on. Chester Thompson was on last week. And cool. I also had uh, Al Dimiola on. And Al said, he said, Preston, you know what? He said, our records came out at the same time. He says, heavy weather and my album, Elegant Gypsy. So I think the people at the record company says, why don't you guys do some type of a tour together? And he said that uh, you guys uh, and uh, his band did like maybe 20 or 30 dates. Uh, he was just talking about that recording. Al Demiola says, heavy weather is just, he says, man, it's heavy weather. He says, just one of, one of the best. You know, I actually think that, uh, I actually think the band was probably at their best, Alex, when you and Jocko joined. That is actually my two favorite recordings, Black Market and Heavy Weather, without question. Now, let me ask you a question. After that recording, you left. Why did you leave uh, Weather Report? Good question. Uh, uh, you know, not that I I'd like to remember myself what I said because uh, two things very important. I respect music so much. I'm very yeah. happy about that. And uh, we start doing Mr. Gone. This is yeah. 1978. Yep. I was, I already, <laughs> I moved from, uh, from uh, Las Vegas to Los Angeles, 1978. And we start making Mr. Gone, you know. And, uh, and I went to Joe and Wayne. I said, you know what? It, like, I don't have any new, approach to this new music, you might have to find somebody else because I'm going to be playing, the, I, I, I cannot be playing the same beats I played before. I had to play something else. Yeah. And, and right now, I don't have it. So, no, I listen. And I said, but that's musically. And I said, uh, now I have three children, my wife and three children. I cannot be going on the road and uh, I'm gonna become a studio musician here in Los Angeles. I need really a steady check for my family, you know? So those two things was, yeah. and they understood. Jaco said, yeah. man, I'm so sad that you live in the band. I said, you'll find somebody. And Wayne called me and said, Alex, I'm sorry, man, you, you know that. And I said, I love you guys, you know? And, and, and Wayne, Joe also, Joe, Joe, he didn't, call, he didn't call me. And Jaco told me that he was very sad that I left the, the band. And, uh, but I said, you know, I have big reasons, musical and family. Those, those were big reasons why I left the band, you know? And Alex, I respect that too. I mean, you gotta do what's best for you and your family, so. Yeah, and, and I stop and think, I says, what would have happened if Alex Acuna had stayed with the band? You know, they would have made uh, incredible music, but you did what you had to do at that time. Uh, now, you went on, like you said, you became a, a force of studio musician, and you worked with so many great people. I was just looking, you know, Paul McCartney, Joni Mitchell, Michael Jackson, Chick Corea. I mean, what was it like working with someone like Paul McCartney? Or were, were you a fan of the Beatles? <laughs> the, only on the first record, <laughs> the first record. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, beautiful. They came actually to United States the same year I came to United States. 1964, they, I believe. Right. Yeah. yeah, same year. And I started dressing like them, you know, and cutting my hair, <laughs> like, wearing the same boots kind of thing, you know, and I right, just right. happened. And uh, I love the music, always did. Anyhow, but uh, Paul never used a percussionist in his album. And uh, I play percussion and he, he sent four or five tracks, I think, to Matt Hatter uh, here at uh, Chicoria's studio. Right. Here in Los Angeles. And I start playing. I said, whose music is this? They said, that's Paul McCartney. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they told me the story. The producer came, you know, whatever, the guy that uh, they, they wrote the music for him and everything. He never came. I never met him. We talk later in, in life. Uh, by the way, you know, jumping from that to the drummer that played with, with him, with Paul McCartney for 20 years, you know, Abe Laboriel Jr. I sure do. He studied with me for eight years. That was mm -hmm. my student. Ah. And I even got him a scholarship to go to Berkeley. Wow. I sent it to Berkeley. That's Eddie, incredible. Yeah. And, and, and uh, he was playing with, the, with Paul. So one day Paul uh, 
came to, to meet us, to meet his father and me, and you know, Abraham Sr. and me, and uh, he took a picture with us, and, and he said, you, he, he said, you are the teacher of my drummer. I said, yeah. <laughs> so he told him I was his teacher, you know. And that's, that's incredible. Man, that is unbelievable. Anyhow, but uh, yeah, that's what I did with, the, with Paul, and that's when I met him, and uh, we took pictures together, you know, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. So, Alex, what was it like, you know, like, I, there's so many artists that you've, you know, performed with. Uh, what was it like working with Chick Corea? Oh, man. What a, what a pianist, huh? <laughs> well, Chick, I tell you, I tell you, man. Many people probably didn't say or think or thought about this, about Chick. I do because I play with him. I did an album playing drums. Mm -hmm. With a, it's called Touchstone. Touchstone, yeah, I know about that one. <laughs> yeah, Paco de Lucia is there. The late Paco de Lucia. Mm -hmm. the late, Don Elias, Carlos Benavent. Anyhow, it's a beautiful album. That's the first time we recorded in 1982. That's the first time that uh, flamenco music was recorded in the United States, mm. especially the Buleria. <laughs> You know, and uh, so Paco is the one that recommend me to Chick to play. I think they had another drummer playing, and they weren't in. A, they were not able to cut it. And Paco says to Chick, uh, "They are they are only maybe three countries that play in three very fluently." One is Venezuela, it's amazing. Definitely Spain, and the other one is Peru. And there's a drummer here from Peru that I'm pretty sure he played with Joe. Uh, oh, Alex, yeah, call Alex. So they called me, and he sent me the music and everything. And uh, it wasn't easy because, you know, Chick is an, an amazing writer, player. So Chick, for me, of all the American piano players, I mean, I don't want to put the names out there, but you know who they are. Oh, yeah. For me, Chick is the only one that can play flamenco music mm. like, like, like a flamenco. He understands yeah. and he plays it. Well, he wrote La Fiesta, right? You know, all that, you know. That. You know, like very, this. Right. You know, very rhythmic, very rhythmic. Chick is yeah. very rhythmic. And yeah. Flamenco and the style, the harmony, the flamenco, jazzy and everything. So, uh, Chick said, wow, Alex, you having a little problem with this too? I said, well, I never, I, I play in three, but this is 12-8. And so I said, you know, I have to really, so it took a minute. And when he, the tune came out, I said, yes, great, you know, beautiful. And uh, that's when flamenco music was born here in the States, 1982, you know. Incredible. And, and he offered me to go on the road. And he got disappointed with me because I say no, you know. I didn't even talk about money to him with him. I say, you know, I just uh, I have to stay in town because I have a family, and uh, you know, I'm raising my family. I have to be here, and I was doing good, excellent, uh, you know, recording with everybody, like you said, and mm -hmm. working a lot, and you know, I still do. Yeah. And uh, so anyhow, the, we became friends. We're still friends, you know. We, he. Armando Correa. Yes. So, yeah, he's still his wife. I actually met his wife in Puerto so, Rico. You're talking about Gail. Gail yeah. Moran. Yeah. Gail Moran. I met her in Puerto Rico in 1970. Wow. Yeah. I, I think that was before even Chick knew her. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> even Chick knew her, exactly. So the Gail, I know Gail from, from Puerto Rico a long time ago. Anyway, so yeah. it was an incredible experience and... Uh, I wish I can do that album now. Now I can really play flamenco drums. <laughs> Here's something, Alex. I really you do. Yeah, you also work with uh, Joni Mitchell. What was it like working with Joni? Man, she 
is one of the most amazing you can she's make. a great artist she's a visual artist too she's a great writer too she's a really incredible individual man and i play mm -hmm. uh, you know i play with the, those albums that we did with jaco and her and ayrto manolo and you know yes. flyers and then uh she invited me to go to that tour with uh lal mays uh, michael Palmatini, brecker brecker palmatini that was a night that was uh, yeah that was a 1979 or 1980 the shadows shadows and light right and i told her no she said i bring your family i said no i can't <laughs> I, I i didn't go so don elias did both you know drums and percussion yeah i remember yeah so i mean i'm not trying to say i say no to a lot of great artists mainly because uh my reasons, I have my reasons, you know, very strong reasons, you know. And that's and respectable. I, 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 yeah, and I tell you, you know, right now, man, I did the right thing. My five children are amazing. Amazing in every way. You're blessed. You're blessed, Alex. Exactly. Amazing. My sons, my three sons, they became entrepreneurs. Mm. Uh, they own 11 Jersey Mikes. Oh, well, everybody knows Jersey Mikes. Wow. Right. They own nine over here in Los Angeles and two in Miami, and they work together. And they, you know, and they, the family is a family business. Oh, that's great, man! And that's even fantastic. My grandkid, even my grandkids are working with them. You know, it's, so it's it's yeah, I did the right thing. You know, I, I I work a lot to be able to send them to a good college. I send I send the, my twins. You know, they went to Park State College in uh, over there in uh, Maryland. <sighs> Yeah, that's incredible, what they went. Incredible, incredible, yeah. man. I'm, so anyhow, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you see? So, so anyhow, but yeah, talking about music, man, working with Johnny Mitchell, and I kept working with her. She kept calling me to do more albums, you know, in her yeah. house. She has a studio in her house. Uh, really great person. Actually, about, uh, you know, Steve, drummer from New York, Steve Jordan. Steve Jordan, okay. Steve Jordan called me, said, Alex, we're doing a tribute to Johnny Mitchell and Wayne Shorter. They want you to play with us. You can play drums, percussion, whatever, but I, you know, we can switch. I said, no, 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 you play the drums, I play the percussion, don't worry about it. So we did a tribute last year, actually, last, yeah, about around uh, last October. And, uh, and they were there. The both of them were sitting on, on wheelchairs, man. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw that. I don't know if it was YouTube or something, if they televised it. I can re vaguely remember seeing Joni. Uh, was, wasn't Herbie there, Herbie Hancock? No, no, Herbie. That must have been another event, okay. Pa Patrice Russian was playing. Patrice Russian, okay. Yeah. Okay, wow, wow. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, Paratucci came yeah, from- John Paratucci, yeah. John came from New York and some great players. We saw we, Chaka Khan was singing her song. Oh, wow. Chaka Khan, <laughs> Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Yeah, Chaka yeah, she's Chaka great. Khan. She's great. Now, yeah, Alex, she, Alex, I was going to say, you've played, you know, your your resume is incredible. I mean, like I said, you you remind me a lot of Vinny Kaliuta, the drummer. He's like played with everybody, a great session player. Uh, you also played with Michael Jackson. What was it like working with him? Well, I played with the Jackson brothers. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, I did some session for Michael Jackson with uh, Quincy, but I don't think they made it to the to the album. Ah, uh, okay. I, so I don't even remember the name of the tunes or anything like that. Uh, but we play in Las Vegas with the Jackson Five, and, and he was there, Michael and his brothers. Now, you know, I wanted to, you made me think of something. I wanted to shift gears a little bit. Getting back to jazz, uh, you also work with one of the all-time great singers, Ella Fitzgerald. Oh. Uh, what was it like working with her? Wow. <laughs> you work with her? No, I'm saying you work with her. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In the early 80s. Oh, no, actually, 79. <clears throat> 1979. Oh, my goodness. Or maybe 80s, beginning of 80s, exactly on the 80s. Because that's when my youngest daughter was born and she gave her uh, a dress. Uh, oh man, Ella. And Tooth Tillman. Oh, Tooth is it? great. Yeah, good, another friend of Jocko's too. I was just thinking, he did, some, he did a great tune with Jocko. You're probably familiar with it. Three Views of a Secret. That's right. 
That's a and, beautiful song. I love and, that tune. Yeah. And Joe Pass also yeah. was there. Oh Joe my Pass. God, could you believe that? And those players over there said, we come with two theme and, and Joe Pass. I know, I know, that's, that's incredible, yeah. <laughs> All those guys in one room and say, oh, my goodness. And Ella, you know, I have that album. I still have it, you know. Oh, man. She's, <laughs> one, she's one of the all-time greats. Yeah. Now, um, Alex, I wanted to ask you, uh, you're also an educator, and uh, you taught at uh, Berkeley College of Music. Tell us about that. Is that something that you enjoy doing, teaching? Well, I went as a residency only because, you know, like, I, yeah, not, not really in the staff there, you know. I went there mm -hmm. five days, you know, like that. I did it over here too, USC, UCLA, uh, Cal State Northridge, you know. Uh, many places requested me to be in the staff, to be a teacher. I, I don't have the time, maybe be, mainly because I still do a lot of sessions. Yeah. And, and I can't, I have to be, no sessions is where it's at for me. Mainly because, you know, uh, the, the, the royalties, you know. The, the royalties now is paying off really good for me. You know, I'm, I'm in my house and just receiving my pension, you know. That's great, man. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. those kind of things. But um, uh, uh, I still teach. I still teach to anybody who really wants to learn. And I don't charge anything. Amazing. And you, know, and, you know, let me tell you this. If anybody's listening out there, they called me, students, Alex, I want to study with you. I said, what? Drone, precaution, everything. I said, okay. Everything means you're going to be with me for maybe three or four years to be able to get where you want to get. And if you stay with me for all that time, it's going to be free. I won't charge you any money. But if you come in to study one or two lessons and then you're going to say that you started with me, then it's going to be $500 an hour. So let me know what you want to do. They never called me back. Wow. That was, you know, what's incredible about that? What an opportunity to study with one of the all-time greats. I would, I would love that, to spend that much time with you learning, uh, I, I don't understand what people are thinking to turn something like that down, but uh, that would be uh, such a wonderful thing to do. I actually have a friend who's a percussionist who loves you. I told him I was going to have you on the show. He says, you're kidding, Alex Acuna? He said, that's my guy, man. That's my dude. He loves you, and I think he met you many years ago. Um, but uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, Alex, when you're at home, maybe just relaxing with your wife or you know, by yourself, taking it easy, what type of music do you listen to when you're just at home uh, what do you put on? I mean, do you put on classics? I also know that you're a big fan of John Coltrane and you like a love supreme. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah. That a story is oh my goodness. One of the greatest well, recordings ever. You know, it's funny. I talked to uh, years ago. I talked to Maurice White of Earth, Wind, and Fire, and I asked him. I says, if you were stranded on a desert island, Maurice, and you could only have one record, he stopped me and said, Preston, John Coltrane, A Love Supreme. You know, that is a uh, uh, such an important record. But uh, just speaking about that, what is it about that record that you like so much, uh, Alex? Because um, I've talked to countless musicians, and they cite that. And Miles Davis is kind of blue as a uh, two of the most re important recordings in jazz music. That's true. You know, what happened is when I came, like I told you, 1964, I discovered, yes. I discovered John Coltrane. Oh, okay. And by the way, I came to New York first. I stayed right there in Times Square, the Hotel Victoria. Okay. On 56 or 57 and Times Square, right there, 7th Avenue. And they put me there. And that night I came out and he told me, you know, the Perez Prado told me, Alex, don't go farther than 12th Street and don't go after, don't, don't, don't even go to, to the park right there, <laughs> Central Park, you come back from Central Park. I said, okay, because you know, I was only 18 yeah. years old. And uh, so in those days, there was right there in Times Square a bar, jazz club called Metropole. Uh, this is 1964. A lot of people don't know that, but you can Google it now. 
And Gene Krupa was playing that night. Great the, drummer, yeah. The first night when I came <laughs> to New York, I said, they didn't let me in the club because I was a minor. You know, I was uh, working with my passport and my green card, and they didn't, uh, they didn't allow me. I said, no, you're a minor, you can't come in. So I went on top of the car, you know, just looking and all night, you know, just looking at Chin Krupa. And then the next night was uh, Woody Herman. Uh -huh. And uh, amazing drummer. Oh man, how can I? Anyhow, and uh, and then I came to Los Angeles and uh, I met some jazz musicians that were playing in the same band that I was playing with. And they say, what instrument do you really like? I said, the instrument that my father plays is tenor. Yeah. Ten tenor, yeah. Do you know Jungle Dreams? I said, well, I heard of him in kind of blue with a... Uh, Miles and Cannibal, and he said, yeah, that guy, but now he, he has his own band. So still, uh, I Love Supreme wasn't now because I Love, Su I Love Supreme came in 65. Right. So he started playing me all the, all the things that John Coltrane played. You know, I said, whoa, man, I got the chills. But I tell you why I got the chills. So in 65, when it came out, that's how I knew more about John Coltrane. And uh, I heard this beat that is in double time. It's a, a ballad. I love to bring. Yeah. I love to bring. I love to bring. I love to bring. And then I love to bring. I love to bring. Elvin Jones playing the Mozambique beat on the drums. He's the first guy that I heard the Mozambique beat on the drums. Mm. And the way he plays it, I can play it. Now I'm still studying that beat. And you know, with the bass drum in a different place. Right. I said, oh my gosh. You know, and Steve got told me the same thing. He said, I learned that from Elvin Jones, you know, the most- Elvin Jones, yeah. Elvin Jones. Now, the reason I, I'm gonna say this word because it's the word that I can describe. The musical attraction that I have for John Coltrane and Elvin Jones, which later I met Elvin Jones in, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I, that's a different story. <laughs> so uh, I discovered that John Coltrane's grandfather was a pastor, a preacher. Mm -hmm. and they had a church. So my wife got me all the DVDs, now the blu rays of, and I, in those days when she got me all the, 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 the it was the, the VHS, and I see Elvin sitting at the church with his wife, and, and John Coltrane's video begins, they baptizing somebody inside the church. That was his grandfather. Mm -hmm. So that was the musical attraction that I had with them. They were very spiritual musicians. So am I. You know, and that's why I spent, I didn't even know when I started listening to to John Coltrane, I know all, I have all his albums, yeah. all of them. I, there isn't another musician in the whole world that have played an incredible spectrum of jazz styles, and 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 I love all the little, you know, like a cosmic music and uh, expression. All yes. those with Rashid Ali on drums, right? I love all of that with a. Uh, uh, Alice Coltrane on piano, you know, and Jimmy Garrison. I love right. all those kind of music too as well. I, I listen to John Coltrane all day, every day of my life in those days. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, because uh, I love Elvin and then later I love uh, also uh, Rashid Ali, you know, and Alice. And, and McCoy Tyner. 
Oh, McCoy, yeah. <laughs> McCoy, I listen to McCoy. I still listen to McCoy. Yeah, I, he's great. I, so when you ask me what kind of, yeah, I listen, I like to listen to master musicians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, I was going to ask you, did drummer Tony Williams have an influence on you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were born the same date. Really? December, was it 12th or 9th? 12th. Okay. I'm one year older than him. Right, yeah. He, he was, was 40, 45, yeah. I'm 44. I'm okay. 75 years old. Okay. So, you know, and I met Tony. I met Tony. You know, I talked to him a little bit. A different right. kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a different kind of guy. Great drummer. Uh, him and Jack DeJanet. You know, something, someone who's amazing is Roy Haynes. Roy is like 95 and still going. Woo! 95, yeah. I just That's saw him. I saw him earlier this year, Alex, played his butt off. He still, he could still play very well. Yeah. That's what I'm going. I'm going, I'm going to the route. I'm going right. there. Yeah, I'm going there. I'm going. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a martial artist. I train martial arts. That's fantastic. You want me to tell you who is my teacher? Who? Dan Inosanto. Let me tell you, I know Dan Inosanto very well. He was one of Bruce Lee's closest friends. Yeah, Nine Philip, years together. That's right. That's right. He trained and he even said that Bruce Lee, he said there's no one even to this day like Bruce, but Dan is one of the greatest martial artists uh around. Yeah, Filipino martial arts, uh Eskrima. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Wow oh I, yeah, you, you got is that the Wing Chun dummy I see? Yes. <laughs> oh, Alex, that's great. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, man. I didn't know that you. Uh, I didn't know that you did martial arts. Yeah, Danny Nosanto is uh, one of the world's greatest martial artists. That's fantastic. I did not know that you did that. That's great. I did. I started doing martial arts when I was living in Puerto Rico. I did uh, Kyokushinkai, uh, Koyuryu, Karate Do from Okinawa. That's great. And I I went there until almost brown belt. I I left before I was uh, getting my brown belt. I went on the road. That's when I came to Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, I did a Shotokan with a bass player. Wow. And then I came to Los Angeles, and I started training with Benny the Jet Urquides. Uh, one of the greatest tournament fighters of all time. Benny was, a, Benny's great, yeah. He had a, a, a dojo called uh, Yukido Khan. Okay. And, and I took all my children, even the girls, they did martial art for five years. That's and great. Did, yeah, I always did it, but I... Always, uh, you know, because I go on the road and you always recording, it's kind of tough to, 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 you know, to do constantly, you know, because you need a partner also to train. So about seven years ago, I was doing a, 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 a clinic at uh, uh, CSUN, uh, Cal State Northridge University of California. And two of his students, uh, also drummers, came over to see my clinic. And by the way, Dan uses drums. In yes, he does. He does. He's a uh, he's eighty four. He's eighty four years old and still going 85. strong. Eighty five this year. Eighty five. Oh wow, amazing. 85. Yeah, eighty five. And uh, he's teaching. He's still teaching. I'm not going yet because I'm, I I didn't get I didn't I haven't not get the, the the green light about you know about the COVID. You know? COVID. I got you. I got you. But wow. uh, because of my age, but um, I've been with him seven years. Like four days a week, four hours a day. Mm. I do silat, you know, which is in yes. silat. I do silat. I do uh, Wing Chun. Uh, yes. Wing Chun. William, I, William, William Chung taught uh, Bruce Lee because, you know, he studied with Yip Man, but uh, William Chung and uh, Dan knows a lot of that stuff too. I'm, I'm very familiar with that. I've been studying Dan uh, for, oh gosh, maybe over 40 years, more than that. So I'm very familiar with him, his students. Uh, boy, that I'm, I'm impressed. I did not know that you uh, you were involved in the martial arts. I guess I it helps Kali. you with your it helps you with your drumming too. So Kali, that's, Kali, Kali, Kali. That's right, Kali. That's right. And a Chisao. Yeah, the Chisao. That's the the, the Wing Chun stuff. Yeah. Right, right. That's but amazing. Kali, Kali is the most most high tech martial art there is. Wow. That, that is, it, when I went there, he was still teaching only brown belts and black belts. And uh, they introduced him to me 
with his students and uh, he said, Alex, I'm going to teach you. They already told me who you are. And I took my wife because my wife saw all the kids training with many old kids for many years. So she knew. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he said, Alex, the reason I'm going to take you in my class is because you play drums and percussion. So you're going to be able to understand Kali. Yeah, yeah. Because it's very similar to drumming. Yeah. You know, it's dancing and it's uh, coordination, memorization, which is great for the, men, the mind. Yes. And, and, and then, you know, he uses six S's. Stamina, strategy, strength, strength, skill, speed, and spirit. And that's what he does. And uh, he says, don't rush, take your time, you know, good, good placement, good angle, you know, and good, you know, oh my goodness. Let me tell you, <laughs> my plane, the, I'm teaching this also for free in my home. There are some students that they call me drummers and percussionists. And we do, you know, Zoom exactly like this, and I, and I teach them. I said, let me tell you, man, Kali, not only gave me the stamina, the strength, and all of that. Kali gave me music because it's all rhythmic. It's like, a, it's in 6 8. The, the heaven six is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, ah, two, six. One, yeah. Two, four, five, six. You know, like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, when I, <laughs> when we, when we it's, it's, it's amazing. And I'm glad that you're asking me about this. It's like this, you know. Ah. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And then, incredible. this is about more than 200 disarms. And we use knives. I mean, not, not real knives, but you know, to train. We use the stuff, you know, like a bow, the big stuff. And, uh, and we always in the ground also uh, doing sealat. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, the meat, when you begin doing any martial arts, but Sila or Kali, the first year, you know, if you're 50, you, be, you, look, you become 40 or 35. Mm. Because your stamina, your strength, your, your reflections, your reflex, your, your memorization, and the quickness, and man, my drumming, I played now better than when I was 40. That's incredible. That is really incredible. So it's interesting. That should be something uh, the drummer should re really uh, take a look at, that maybe studying martial arts can be very beneficial for you as far as drumming is concerned. That, that's, uh, mm, that's well, uh, wow. Drumming is like martial arts. Yeah. If, if you spend four or six hours on drum every day, you're doing martial arts. Ah. Uh. Never, I never thought about it that way. That's really interesting. Wow, it, you, you're really, you're really educating me today, Alex. I'm learning a lot. This is good. This is good. <laughs> I need to thank you so much. Do you practice martial arts? I used to do martial arts taekwondo a long time ago, and I have uh, some friends who study martial arts. So I'm very familiar with Danny Nosanto, his background, and a lot of things. You know, he just talks about Bruce Lee, how incredible Bruce Lee was. He says, still to this day, there's no one like Bruce Lee. He was just so blown away by him and he was like ahead of his time. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he learned so much. He actually helped Bruce Lee in creating Jeet Kune Do. So, um, yeah, just, just incredible. But listen, Alex, hang on. I'm about to close out the show. And listen, first off, I want to say thank you so much for being on Jazz Talk. It's been a joy and a pleasure just sharing this space with you and just you sharing your knowledge, man. It, I'm, I'm so thankful. Hang on. Well, you've heard it from the great Alex Acuna. And as the saying goes, if the music grooves and makes you move, it must be jazz. I'm Preston Williams with Jazz Talk signing off. Peace. Yes.